The episode begins with a girl named Dot Tatler telling us about the day when the world as she knew it ended while walking into what seems to be a circus fair. It was Saturday, the 3rd of September, 1952. She says the shadows that had sheltered her were banished by the blinding lights of scrutiny. She knew she was entering the gates of hell, but just like the inescapable pull of gravity, there was nothing she could do about it. The movie then cuts to a milkman arriving at Eudora Tatler's country farmhouse in Jupiter, Florida. He notices that Mrs. Tatler still hasn't picked up her delivery from the other day. Worried, he ventures into her home to inspect. To his horror, he finds Mrs. Tatler's brutally murdered dead body lying next to the dining table. He freaks out, but decides to further investigate. He grabs a rolling pin from the kitchen and heads upstairs. He follows a strange noise coming from inside a closet, only to freak out even more. The episode then cuts to an injured woman being wheeled into an operating room. A nurse emerges from the room with a look of disgust on her face from what she has witnessed, and she vomits in the hall. The doctor examines the woman through an x-ray machine and reveals that the injured woman has one bladder, three kidneys, four lungs, and two hearts with a shared circulatory system. Later, a nurse reads a news article about the incident. It says a wounded, monstrous creature, possibly a blood relative of Mrs. Tatler, was found in her home. She was thought to have lived alone. A candy striper named Penny speculates that the monster was Mrs. Tatler's child, who she kept hidden from the world. A woman named Elsa Mars arrives and makes small talk with Penny before asking her about the extraordinary creature that's rumored to have been brought into the hospital. Penny refuses to give her information about the patient, but Elsa appeals to Penny's young inner rebel and hands her a business card that says Fraulein Elsa's Cabinet of Curiosities, asking her to visit. Later, Elsa dresses up in Penny's outfit and makes her way into the secure wing where the patient has been kept. She peeks through the curtains to find a woman with two heads sleeping on the bed. They are Dot and Bet Tatler, Mrs. Tatler's daughters. Elsa removes the curtains and wakes them up, complimenting their beauty. She hands the sisters a balloon and reveals that she dropped by their home to get them a comfortable dress and because she is nosy. It turns out that the two sisters can communicate telepathically. Dot has a serious demeanor and loves quiet, while Bette is more bubbly and likes watching movies. Elsa fails to charm Dot, who sees through her and is wary of her intentions, but manages to smooth talk Bette, comparing her to Jean Arthur. She asks the girls about their sex life and boyfriends, which makes Bette giggle while Dot scoffs in disgust. Elsa then leaves the sisters alone, but not before promising to return. The scene then cuts to a couple, Troy Miller and Bonnie Lipton, making out by the Lake Okeechobee. Suddenly, Troy runs to his car to fetch something. As Bonnie waits for her lover to come back, someone is seen coming out of the bush and walking towards her. The girl finally notices the person, and it is revealed to be a clown. It has a creepy grinning mask on the lower half of his face. Bonnie is scared of him at first, but the clown genuflects and gives her fake flowers, making her feel more secure and comfortable. The clown then pulls out bowling pins from his bag as Troy returns. Bonnie gets nervous again when she learns that Troy didn't hire him. The clown again pretends to genuflect and knocks the couple out with the bowling pin. When Bonnie gains consciousness, she finds the clown stabbing Troy to death with a pair of scissors. Frightened, she attempts to run, but the clown catches up to her. At a diner, Elsa is cutting newspaper clippings for her scrapbook about movies, while other patrons are reading about the horrific murder at the Tatler house. Elsa notices a guy named Jimmy Darling, who is wearing leather mittens, flirting with a waitress on the other side of the diner, which, for some reason, enrages her. She confronts him and calls him out for flirting with girls while she works her ass off to find this new place that they can call home, somewhere they can expand their show and build an audience. Jimmy retorts that he overheard their landlord asking her to leave and tells her that she is living in delusion. In a flashback sequence, Elsa is seen hanging laundry while holding a two-foot-tall grown woman named Ma Petite when her landlord, Mr. Haddonfield, approaches and tells her that he wants her to vacate his land. He wants to lease his land to someone else who is willing to pay in advance and in cash. He tells her that even though she signed a lease for a year, she hasn't had any customers for her show in two months. Moreover, Mr. Haddonfield's wife doesn't like having the freaks staying in the field. 
Elsa retorts that her monsters wouldn't hurt a fly and shows her landlord her silk Belgian lingerie. She hands him her lingerie and invites him into her room for schnapps. Back in the present, Elsa tells Jimmy to mind his business when he wonders out loud how she managed to convince the landlord to let them stay for another month. She then tauntingly asks him what the waitress he was flirting with would think of his deformity. Jimmy brushes her comment aside and tells her that it is over, which only enrages Elsa, and she tells him that things are going to change and that she has a plan. The movie then cuts to a suburban home where a group of housewives have gathered for a kitty party where they complain to each other about their bad sex lives. A woman then appears from the back room, grinning, strutting, and smiling ear to ear, as if someone had just satisfied her immensely. The host then approaches the shy wife among the group and raves to her about a roadside attraction. The shy wife then goes to the back bedroom where Jimmy is waiting for her with his mittens off. It turns out Jimmy's hands are deformed. The woman lays on the bed and lifts her dress up and Jimmy proceeds to work his magic. Back at the hospital, Elsa asks the girls about the night their mother was murdered. Dot claims that it was a robbery gone bad. She says the robber got enraged when he realized that they had nothing to steal and killed their mother in anger before attacking them. Bet adds that the man wore a fedora and reeked of aqua velva. However, as Bet continues, Elsa recognizes her story as the plot from a Hollywood movie called Gaslight. Elsa then reveals that she knows Mrs. Tatler died two days ago before the sisters were found with fresh wounds. She sees through their bullshit and tells them to get their story straight before the police approach them. Meanwhile, the creepy clown continues to go on a crime spree. He brutally murders a couple, Jeffrey and Mildred Bachman, in their home and abducts their eight-year-old son, Corey. The series of murders and kidnappings in a span of one month in an otherwise peaceful town leads the police to believe that the same maniac killed the Bachmans, Mrs. Tatler, and Troy Miller, and kidnapped Corey and Bonnie. The clown has held Corey and Bonnie captive in a dilapidated trailer in what seems like the middle of a forest. Seeing the boy so frightened, the man tries to get the boy to smile, but only ends up scaring him even more. Frustrated, the clown then starts throwing things at the cage. Afraid of getting arrested, the Tatler sisters run from the hospital, but Elsa catches them red-handed at home, preparing to flee. She accuses them of killing their mother. She speculates that Bette must have killed Mrs. Tatler in a fit of rage because she wouldn't take them to the movies or let them go out. Dot confesses to this and claims Bette didn't know what she was doing, causing Elsa to speculate that Dot stabbed Bette to make it seem like they were also victimized by their mother's killer. Bette gets straight to the point and asks what Elsa wants from them. Elsa finally reveals her true intentions and takes the sisters to her home. She plans to use them as the star attractions of her freak show that features abnormally developed people. It is September the 3rd. Bette journals in her diary about finally being free. She is mesmerized by the silk, glamour, and lights of the circus. Meanwhile, Dot dreads the future and longs for the quiet of the farm. Elsa's freaks include Jimmy's mother, Ethel, the bearded woman, Meep, the geek, Pepper, and others. Jimmy grows worried about the police looking for the Tatler sisters, but Elsa tells him that she plans to be their alibi. On Elsa's orders, Jimmy puts up a poster of their show, highlighting their star attractions, the Siamese sisters. A car full of young hooligans passes by and harasses Jimmy and a few of the other freaks for being different, reminding Jimmy how the world treats them differently because of their condition. Later that night, a disheveled Penny storms into the dining room and confronts Elsa for drugging her However, Elsa laughs her off and reminds her that she willingly came with them. She shows Penny footage of a very happy Penny, high as a kite, making out and performing sexual acts with Jimmy and the other freaks. Stunned and horrified, Penny proceeds to leave, threatening to tell the world about the depravity of the freaks. But Elsa stops her and tells her that the real monsters are outside this tent in the suburbs. The bored, bitter, stifled, soulless housewives who dream of strange erotic pleasures behind closed doors. Meanwhile, Elsa's monsters who others call depraved are beautiful heroes who offer their oddity, laughter, and fright to the people in need of entertainment unabashedly. They lead the life they chose, unlike others. The next day, Jimmy hands his mom the money he made entertaining housewives and tells her that he wants to leave the show to live a normal life. But Ethel shuts him down and tells him this is the normal for them. Later, Jimmy notices a detective inside Dot and Bette's tent, 
proceeding to arrest them on suspicion of murdering their mother. Jimmy defends them, saying they wouldn't hurt a fly, but the detective calls the twins depraved monsters who could do anything. Fed up with being ridiculed and disrespected for being different, Jimmy kills the detective in a fit of rage. For the first time, Dot feels a sense of community with the freaks and thanks Jimmy for saving them. That night, a snooty and entitled guy named Dandy Mott and his mother Gloria sit in the audience waiting for the show to start. It is revealed Gloria bought the entire show just for her son. Soon, Ethel opens the show and introduces the man with hands for arms, Pepper, Ma Petite, and the Siamese sisters. Next, Elsa takes the stage and belts out a David Bowie number with the freaks performing behind her. Dandy develops a liking for Dot and Bet, and after the performance, Gloria tells Elsa she wants to buy the twins for her son, revealing she is willing to go as high as $15,000. However, Dot and Bet turn down the offer, saying that the freak show is their home. Upset, Gloria makes fun of Elsa, calling her attempt at singing pathetic and the most freakish thing of all tonight before storming out. Afterwards, Jimmy leads a procession of the freaks to bury the detective in the woods. He delivers a passionate speech, calling out how badly the world treats them. He says if the world wants to call them monsters without even knowing them, then they will act like monsters. He vows that if anyone tries to mess with them from now on, they will end up like the detective. The freaks then converge on the detective and hack him to bits as the clown watches it transpire from a distance. Later, when Elsa skips dinner, Ethel brings food to her tent. It seems that Gloria's words have taken a toll on Elsa's mind. When Ethel thanks Elsa for saving them by bringing the twin sisters, Elsa confesses that she didn't bring the twins to save the show. She brought them to save herself. Elsa has always wanted to become a star, but now she wonders if it's too late for her. Taking Elsa's opium pipe away, Ethel assures her that she is gifted and meant to become a household name. After Ethel leaves, Elsa puts on some music and takes off her pantyhose, revealing her artificial legs. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.